Okay, so here we are back at our previous document. What I've done is add in the head tag because what we're going to look at in this video are document level and external style sheets. Those are CSS, just like the code that we've been doing between the quotes here, except they're formatted a little bit differently and they apply in a different way. So in the head tag, we're going to add the style tag and the end style tag. Between those tags, no HTML, you can only put cascading style sheets code, the stuff that would go between the quotes in the style attribute here. The stuff that goes between here will apply to the entire document, but it can be overridden by the inline styles. So what you put in this style tag is the name of the tag that you want the style to apply to, and it will apply to all of the tags like that. So let's start with one for the body tag. There's only one body tag, but we're going to put those styles up here. And then you have a set of curly braces and the styles go inside. So it's kind of like what would go between the quotes in the style tag here. So we could have font dash family. Let's do courier. That's going to give us like a, a typewriter font. And then we do a semicolon. You use the semicolons to separate different style attributes. You could, by the way, use those here. So we could do semicolon font dash family colon courier in line. And that's fine. You can separate as many styles as you want with the semicolon. So we have font family courier. Let's do a background color. Let's do like a light green. And let's do color. That's the text color. Let's do like a dark green. Okay. So we'll save that. And now if we come over here and reload, you can see that we have the light green for the background. We have the dark green for the text, but when we set the text color to blue with the inline style for welcome, that's still there. So adding the color to be dark green here applies to the whole document, but it's overridden when we have an inline style. So the document level styles are applied first and then the inline styles are applied. And if there's a conflict, the inline styles win. Similarly, we set the font family to courier here, but this whole font is an Arial and that's because we set it to Arial in the body tag itself. And since that's an inline style, it overrides what's up here. If we were to take that out and reload, now it looks like this. We can also do some interesting things based on uh, the state of what's happening in the document and that particularly applies to links. So for a link, that's A, but links are in different states. They can be visited, unvisited, you could have your mouse over them, and there's actually ways in style sheets to address each of those different things. So there's A colon link, that deals with an unvisited link. There's A colon visited, and there's a colon hover. There's other options, but let's look at a colon hover because that's interesting. That's something that we can't handle in HTML. So let's say when you're hovering over the link, we want it to look different. So when, if we remember our link over here just looks like a normal link, except we took out the underline. So let's say when we hover over the link, we want the background color, uh, we'll make it sort of obnoxious and red just so it's really easy to see. All right, so we reload. It looks the same, but as we move our mouse over it, the background turns red. All right, that's not the best color choice, but it allows you to see this kind of interesting thing, which you can't do without CSS, uh, which is you can override it. And because we have this in a document level style, if I put in another link, so let's say I add one here, So there's our second link. When I mouse over that, it also turns red. Because this A colon hover is in the document level style, it will apply to every link in the document. Whereas the inline styles, for example, here, we took off the text decoration, that only applies to that specific tag. So it applies to this link. That one doesn't have the underline, but this one does have the underline because we only remove the underline as an inline style. So document styles apply to everything anywhere in the document, which can be really good if you have a long document, say with lots of links and you want them all to look the same. Uh, you can format all of your links up in the header here.
There may be something that you want to do to lots of different tags though. For example, so in this document we have our light green background, our dark green text. Maybe we want to have a kind of emphasis that shows up. And we want to emphasize lots of different types of text. We're going to do it in a certain way. So let's say we want to change the font. Instead of using this courier font, we'll use the Arial font. Uh, we want to make that emphasized text bold and we'll think of some other stuff to do. Now we can't put a tag name because we want to apply it to lots of different tags, uh, but we're going to emphasize in the HTML which of those tags it is. So what we do is create something called a class that starts with a dot always, and then you can name it whatever you want. So let's call it emphasis. We use the same curly braces and then we specify our style. So the text that we're emphasizing is going to have font family Arial. And let's use this kind of cool one font variant is small caps. So that's going to do exactly what it says, small capitals. And let's do color black. Okay, so that won't apply to anything right now, but we have this emphasis that we've created and we can go in and add it to other tags. So let's add it to our welcome. I'm going to get rid of our style that we have there and we're going to say class equals emphasis. I don't put the dot here. The dot only goes when I'm defining it. Um, let me also get rid of the style here and I'll put class equals emphasis. Should go in quotes to be proper. So I have two different tags, an H1 and a span. I've applied the emphasis class to both of them. So now when we come and reload, you can see we've got both of these in small caps, black, and in the alternate font. So normally you're going to be using tag names, but you can have specific states of tags and you can create your own classes that you then put notes in line in the HTML to apply that style to it. Now, what we've created here is a document level style sheet. You can also create external style sheets. Those are separate documents that have exactly the same thing in them as would go between the style tags. And external style sheets are useful because if you have a website with multiple pages and you want all those pages to have the same style, you can have one file with all those styles. So for example, if you say, you know, I don't like the background color to be green, I want it to be white. Instead of having to go through hundreds of pages and change the style in all of them, they can all just point to one style sheet that you can update and then your changes will be reflected on all the pages. That's an external style sheet. External style sheets get overridden if there are conflicts by the document level style sheets and those in turn get overridden if there are conflicts by the inline style sheets. So let's make this, take it from a document level style sheet and make it an external style sheet. So I'm going to cut this, we're going to paste it in a second. I'm going to leave the style tags there. So we'll paste this in here, make that a little bigger. So no tags in here. This is a super common mistake that beginners make. They'll put the style tags in here and then nothing works. This can only be CSS code, no HTML, so don't put those style tags in there. Lots of people do it and it doesn't work and it's frustrating. Only CSS in here. We're going to save this file as mystyle.css. Normally when we save external style sheets, we give them the .css extension. All right, so mystyle.css, I've saved that in the same directory as the file that I'm working at. And now I want to go back to that file and point to that external style sheet, mystyle.css. So we actually aren't going to use the style attribute for that at all. We're going to add in a new line up here. Okay, so this looks a little complicated, but it's not too bad. We're using the link tag. You use that to link to external style sheets. It goes in the header. It is not a link like a clickable link that we've done. This is linking in an external file. We use this attribute rel to say what kind of thing we're bringing in. That gets set equal to style sheet. The type is set equal to text slash CSS. And then href, just like you saw with links, is set equal to the name of that style sheet we created, in this case, mystyle.css. This is a line that basically you'll copy and paste in and just make sure that your href is pointing to the right thing. 
So if we save this and reload, our page should look exactly the same because it's using the same styles. They're just now linked externally since they're not in the style tag itself. And there you go. It looks fine. So the external style sheets are really useful because you can put this line in hundreds of different files that you have. They can all point to that external style sheet and then if you want to make any changes, you can change it in one place in the external style and it will apply everywhere. So I've shown you a bunch of different CSS properties in here, background color, font family, font variant. As I said, there's a reference in the notes for you to see that lists a lot of these properties, but it's one of those things where you just kind of go through references, play around with it, practice, and eventually you'll learn them. Uh, there's nothing to do other than basically memorize them or get used to looking at the references to figure out how to do what you want to do. What we're going to look at next is how we can use other people's styles to make our pages look really nice.